Hey YouTube, Wednesday morning, guess what we got up there? Yeah, we got some sun. So, I'm going to start taking this thing apart, and I'll take you for a little tour with me as I do it. Um, we're going to disconnect the battery. We are going to uh, do some other things, but I'll show you that as I go. I want to drain the water out of this thing, so I need to get a pan to catch the antifreeze. Okay guys, so we disconnected the battery. Now, in, in some of the newer things where the battery negative is going through all kind of fancy um, electronic stuff, you, would, you should actually take both cables off. On this backhoe, this is very simple wiring. So I just took the, po uh, the positive cable off of there and we should be good with that. Okay, so number two was to take the muffler off. It's sitting on the side over there. Uh, the third thing we're going to do is we're going to take the drain plug. Loosen the drain plug right there on the radiator. Take the radiator cap off and leave the block drain out, hopefully. Right, so we're going to take that top radiator hose off now. We'll take it off completely so it's off the head and the radiator and it's out of the way. And then on the opposite side for the heater in the cab, there's two hoses that attach to the head that i got to take off. I'll show you that. Okay, guys, so... What we had here was the, one of the main radiator hose, the upper radiator hose, or not the upper, the lower radiator hose goes on here. <coughs> we took the top radiator hose off, that was on the other side. There's a heater pet, uh, valve here for the heater in the cab, and there's also one underneath here you probably can't see. But this hose and the hose that's hanging down there came off of those, so we were collecting all the antifreeze that we had just put in there. So, um, now we're on to the next step. Okay guys, so the air, this is the intake manifold. And the air intake come up, went into like a, a canister for filtering the air. And then it had a snorkel up top there. So I took all of that off. That's in the, I put everything in the garage. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take off the exhaust manifold. So, uh, it's a little windy today. So normally they have these pieces here bent around the bolts. I don't know why these are bent the other way, but they're 9 16 so I'm going to take them off using a gun. Now, it's been my experience that if you use a six-point socket on exhaust bolts, you'll have a lot better luck than if you don't. However, I'm seeing that these are a pretty good grade of bolts, so we shouldn't have any problems with these. Okay guys, so the exhaust manifold is off there, and while I was working on this side, I took this alternator bracket off the thermostat housing that hooks to the head. Uh, there's a lot of room here, I don't see a reason to take this thermostat housing off at the moment, so I'm just going to pull it off with the head. This can't be that heavy. Um, so I'll take this breather tube off of here yet, and then I'll go ahead and work on the other side. Boy, it's uh, looking bare. Okay guys, so on this side here, um, I need to remove the injector lines because they're interwoven around the intake manifold and I can't get that off without removing them. So I have the fuel lines off the injectors as you can see there. I got to tell you that I really hate taking these lines off of here only because I have seen guys who took the fuel lines off and the machines were like hours and hours of trying to get it started. Um, there is a procedure to follow. I'll just follow that on the way back. But, you know, the memory sometimes of things makes you a, a little leery. I mean, I'm not leery of how to do it or whatever. I'm just leery of, is this sucker going to get fuel later? I'm um, sure it will. I'll just, hey, got to go. Okay, guys, so like I said, I'm, and I'm doing this just to make more pictures in case I need to forget something or I do forget something. So the lines are off the injectors and now they're off the pump. Um, there's a little block here, it's kind of a bracket that holds these things together. I'm going to have to take that apart because I can't get the bracket through the hole that's there to separate these lines. So I'm going to do that next. <clears throat> okay guys, so just to let you know the status of the weather. It's looking like it's pretty cloudy up there, but it's not raining. We had a little drizzle, but that was it. All right, so now, let's see, what am I going to do here? i got to take uh, whatever lines are on, this uh, line that goes to the um, 
I, th I think this is a cold start line here, so I need to take that off. And um, I, there's a wire on here for the cold start. And then I should, oh, I need to take this filter away from this. I don't know if I have to take it off or not. I'm going to try and do it without taking it off. I, I don't know if there's any risers of any type that are inside the manifold there to keep it from coming. That it has to come out rather than just straight up. Or if there's bolts behind this. I didn't look yet. But either way, i got to go get lunch. The boss is calling to me, so I don't want to miss out on that. I'll be back in a little bit. Well, it's starting to rain a little more now. But, um... <laughs> It looks like I'm, I don't know, maybe it's just a passing shower, I'm hoping. So anyway, i got to pick up some of these pools that are out there and stuff, if it, just in case it stays raining. But, uh, yeah, I finished my lunch, and, oh, I wanted to show something else here. I had to talk about those chains that hold the boom up. What I'm showing you here is I made these, or these are at a pretty thick angle iron, and at the top there, I don't know if you can see that, I put a... A piece of metal across there welded it on and what that does is it holds the cylinders apart and it doesn't hurt them here where I have them attached because they're on the metal part of the cylinder so the bucket doesn't really open up there and even if it does it's not going to hurt anything but I needed it high enough that I could you know get the car out if, if I need to so it looks like we're okay with all that stuff <coughs> okay guys so the, line, the lines that go from the preheater over to, um, I don't even know what this is. I don't know, even know what it does. So it looks like a, a union of some sort. But anyway, the lines that go to that I've taken off. So these lines go back to the tank, or like a bleed off on the... Um, they bleed off the excess fuel off the uh, injectors. So... Hold that. So anyway, that's where I'm at so far. So once I pull that black line, then that's the bleed-off line. I might be able to pull it down through there. I don't know if I have to take it off the pump or not, but I'm going to see if I can get away without taking it off the pump. But I don't know. I may as well do it just to get everything out of the way. But I'll see as I go here. We're getting a lot of uh, wind. You can see the trees up there blowing around. They aren't blowing off the trees, but a lot of wind is supposed to get colder tonight. I think that's why it's so windy and it's coming out of the west, so northwest. Anyway. Okay, I'll keep you posted. Here is Okay, so I need to get that uh Intake manifold off there. All, I think all the bolts are out of it. I just got a. It's probably glued on there with some some kind of adhesive for to keep it from leaking. So um, I'm gonna get a little hammer here just to tap it a very little bit. From what I can see, all the screws are out of it, so I'm just going to stick two back in here, a couple of threads, just to keep it from falling and breaking anything, because I'm not taking, I didn't take the fuel filter all apart, all the lines. another one. One more I missed.
Alright. I'm going to take these two bolts back out that I put in there to just hold it up. And then this should come out of here. Okay, so the next thing then is to take the bolts out of the uh, valve cover, which I already have these loose. I've got to get the other side. So I'm going to take the valve cover off first before I take the injectors out. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to take the injectors out, but not just yet. So right now I'm going to take the bolts out of the top of the rocker arm shaft. So I can get that out of there. You want to keep these bolts, you know, where they belong, rather than just take them completely out. And also, you want to keep the push rods down here. You want to keep the push rods in order as to how they went. Now, it tells you to, in the book to check these for being bent. So all you do is twist them, and you can tell whether they're out around pretty easily. I have not. I checked them. No problem with that. So we're keeping on going. Okay guys, so the rocker shaft is off there. Um, 13 16 bolts are pretty big heads on them. Pretty big bolts and very tight. I'd use a, a breaker bar to get them loose. So now we're going to uh, start taking the head bolts out. Well, I guess I should take the injectors off. See, I don't know whether the injectors hang down inside there and sliding the head off may hurt them so I'm going to take them off just to be safe since there's nothing else going to fall into the holes there. I think I'll take the push rods out. Yeah, I'll take the push rods out first. Get the push rods out, keep them in order. Put them on my bench and then I'll take the injectors. Okay guys, I'm sure you can tell it's raining pretty hard. You know, I gotta admit that everything on this, doing this, was pretty easy and now that it's raining, I've got this shield this shield literally has bolts from the fuel tank going into the head. So that shield has to come off. It's got long slots in it where you can pry it up out of there. But you can barely get on the nuts to it. I mean, I'll get it. It's, I already have it loose, but, you know, it's just not what it ought to be. Oh, we're getting some kind of ice here. A little bit of sleet in there. Oh, so close. to take off of there to get that off. Um, that little part that I said I didn't know what it did, which is part of the uh, bleed off system, there's a line on there that has to come off in order for me to be able to get this uh, plate off the back. So i got to get that off in a minute or two. I don't want you getting wet. You might get wet, then what? Oh my goodness. Hey, you can see like, I don't know if you can see that on the fence there. It's like 
wheat or something. You see that? It's like wheat. Oh boy. I'll be back when I get something else going. Well guys, like always, I never know what the heck the date is, but whatever it is, it, it, today's the first day of snow because it was just snowing a second ago. The snow mixed in with this rain. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me just take you off a little here. I can't even see the screen. So, 17th? I think it's the 17th, yeah. I believe it's the 17th. Uh, that's Wednesday the 17th. This is not the kind of day I want to do this again. <laughs> oh man. But, at least 99% uh, of the time it's done, all I gotta do is get the head bolts out. And that won't take long. Unbelievable. This weather. Yeah, the snow mixed in with that. Joy coming down now. You know, I said if it was sunny today, I was going to do this. And I come out and the sun was shining as big as you please. So I started it. I also had to run over and get my neighbor. I built a fire for my neighbor. Now, I'm not complaining about the neighbor, I, the old guy. I really like him. And I went over there without a problem. But if I could have stayed here for the half hour I spent over there, I'd have that head off. Okay guys, that's the plate I was talking about. You can see the slots down at the bottom there. The, the nut, the bolts are in the head. And you can't get them out because of the fuel tank in it, but you can loosen them. And I don't know if Ford did that with the slots, but whoever did it was thinking, so glad they did it. Okay guys, so what I did was I took a piece of this board and uh, I drilled three holes and four holes and three holes. Marked the front of the engine and put the bolts in there. That way I know where they go at a glance rather than trying to figure out which one goes where, just in case they're different sizes. Well, it's not exactly sunny, but I think it stopped for a second. What I'm saying here, this is the fuel tank. I don't know if you can see the bolts in there, but I have a piece of wood so I could pry up them. But anyway, this is the fuel tank. There's two bolts in there, right inside here, that go into the head. Now, I don't know if this would be easier. I don't know which one's easier to take out. It looks like, okay, it looks like I can take the ones out of the bottom here. There must be some kind of a clip holding that or whatever. So I guess I'm going to have to take them out. Probably one on the other side as well. Boy, that's that stupid thing. Whatever. Looks like there's two. Yeah, there should be just two. I'm hoping. Alright, let me see what happens with this. The head is loose. I have all the bolts out of the head. I've already moved the head. So it's loose. I just need to get that bracket out of because at the moment it's attached to the fuel tank. If I would have known that, I would have. Oh, I don't know what I. I don't know what I would have done. Alright, let me find out what size that is and take those bolts out yet. Okay guys, the sun, the sun is shining again but everything's soaking wet. However, here it is. And there's the problem. This is a, uh, I believe an exhaust valve. Let me look at this thing in the picture. Yes, this is an exhaust valve that looks like Tip, the edges of it are off. I don't know why, but they're broken off. Oh, okay, so it's one valve, it looks like. I'm going to get the flashlight so I can see under this thing. <clears throat> I just want to see if there's anything with the piston. No. That looks good. Let's see what kind of rig there is on here. Wow, I can't even grab it with my finger. That is fantastic. 
it's actually not bad. No, even on the other two, I can't grab that ridge. So that means that the ring should be in good shape. All right. So now we know what we got to do. Hmm. I don't have to take the bottom of that engine apart. Yay! Okay, so I need to adjust my tool there a little bit before I can use it to take that valve out. So I need to grab a screwdriver and then I'm going to take care of that. I am very... I, I, I knew that I knew it was cracking. I didn't know if it was cracking because there was a head gasket broken between two cylinders. I didn't know if it was cracking because the rock arm was off, although last week I discovered, you know, the valves were not adjusted properly, so that I figured would solve it. It made the engine run differently when I took the, when I adjusted the valves. It seemed better, but this valve was still goofy, so let me grab a screwdriver and we'll get that valve out of there. Okay, guys, so there you can see what's wrong with the valve. I'm probably going to get guys hollering at me about the ether. But darn, it was been 30 years and now it starts to give me trouble. But anyway, um, this is the problem. Now, I want to turn the head over here so we can get a good look at the... Um, surface here. Oh man, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it's been chewed up. It's shiny all the way around. There's one spot here where there's a little bit of black, but it doesn't look like it's done anything. I'm thinking a lap job and a oh my god, did I just say that? I didn't mean that guys. Uh, well it is lapping. I oh <laughs> Lapping, lapping the valve looks like it'll solve the problem. All I need is the valve. This is fantastic. Oh, I can't. Oh man, fantastic. Even that means the springs and everything were good, and they weren't leaking any oil because they were. I wasn't burning a uh, motor oil. I've never put. I haven't added a quart of motor oil to this thing in years that, because I I change oil regularly. I haven't added a quart in between oil changes, so really happy with this you know if it had to be something one thing having it be one little thing is not a real problem it's not a big deal it's not a big deal i'm gonna check the rest of this thing before i get too happy here Thank my dad for helping me with a lot of this stuff, teaching me uh, all kind of things. I mean, I learned a lot more than he knew. He said it at one time to me, but the point is, is uh, the first job I ever had helping him with motors was to lap valves on a Chevy engine. And uh, he had this little thing where it sucks and sucks, you know, and you're back and forth with it. There is nothing that I can see here that's a problem. Oh man, thank you. Look how snug that valve is in there. I'm going to do this. I think that was on the bottom of the spring. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. I'll clean this thing up good. 
So, we got the sensor to read the profile. Yahoo! Yahoo! It's not even going to cost a lot of money. It's going to probably be... It's probably going to cost me about $60 for the gasket set, I believe. And I think a valve is $8 or $12. Maybe $12. And I'm not playing with the rest of them. I'm, I'm just fixing this one. Guys, thanks for all your comments. And um, a lot of you guys out there gave me some ideas. I, I'm sorry I can't remember the names. I, I have a hard time remembering names unless I know something about you. But um, I, I had a lot of guys tell me, do this, do that, do the other thing. I mean, I know, I know pretty much about cars, but it never helps, or never hurts to have a little bit of help. And whoever helped me with that, I, I want to thank you here and now. Really appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to go put this in there so nothing falls. And hopefully B.I. over there, Bullseye, doesn't chew it up on me. Okay, guys, so it's around 3 o'clock, and we've got the good news by now. That was the last part of the video. We got the uh, factor covered up and with binders so that that thing doesn't blow off there because it's so heavy of wind today. Um, I'll probably go do, go do a little bit of cleanup with the chainsaw now, but this is fantastic. I am so happy with this thing. I mean, I'm not really overjoyed that it happened to begin with, but the point is, is that I knew I had taken pretty good care of this backhoe and. Uh, you know, it doesn't show very many signs of wear, I mean, other than its age, poses, yes, but, but that happens just with, um, you know, sunlight deteriorates the rubber. But uh, for the motor, I thought that motor would last for a really long time, and anyway, having that one valve be the problem, and then seeing that there's no lip inside the engine where the rings are and stuff, I'm going to be measuring the sides by the piston and see how the pistons fit and everything. But I believe the rest of that thing is good. All I need is just to get this done and put it back together. So, I don't think it could be a... The only easier fix it could have been, with, if, especially with taking the head off, is if it would have been a head gasket. And it wasn't, so... Uh, guys, all of you who said who have said any kind of prayers for me or said any kind of wishes for me, I just want to tell you thank you because they help. And um, not much else I can say. So, Yahoo! Have a good one. Hey YouTube, I just wanted to uh, say one other thing here. Yet, I believe that, and I had a bunch of equipment, so I don't really know what was done for what exactly anymore. But I can tell you this, this head I think was from the factory brand new, never taken off yet. And the reason I say that is because there's paint underneath the intake manifold gasket. Normally if the head had been taken off, the mechanic would have cleaned that, or should have cleaned that. Not positive, but now it's not under the exhaust manifold, but it is under the intake manifold gasket. Hmm. That's something different. Anyway, so you might want to know that. So I have it all cleaned off the head and stuff. What you see on here is just wet. It's not oil. It's just a little wet yet. Some. I use lacquer thinner and thinner and mineral spirit to clean it. That seems to do a better job than all the other crap you can buy. And it's cheap. Guys, I don't know if I said uh, intake or exhaust valve earlier in the video, but this is actually an exhaust valve that's that. I may have said intake because I thought this was an intake port, but it's actually over here. This is just a water port, but it's an exhaust valve. If I made the mistake, I don't remember if I did or not, but anyway, that's what I got here. 